All right, now we have handout three, closing entries. So basically here we are going to be taking all of our temporary accounts and closing them out to our permanent accounts. So let's take a look here and figure out what has a normal or what uh, is a permanent account and what is a temporary account that we need to close out. So cash, AR, supplies, inventory, equipment, human depreciation, accounts payable, salaries payable, rent payable, all of our payables, our unearned rent or unearned sales revenue, our common stock and our retained earnings are all permanent accounts. These are basically our balance sheet items and dividends we'll take care of in this problem. And then our sales and our purchases and all of our expenses which are our income statement items we need to close out to put into our balance sheet. So what we need to be doing is closing these accounts out. So if they have a credit balance, we need to debit them to close them out. And if they have a debit balance, we need to credit them to close them out. And all of them will go into the income summary and then we'll eventually put that into our retain earnings and then from our retain earnings, we pay out our dividends. So first let's look at what we need to debit to close out. So that's gonna be our sales, our purchase returns and allowances and our purchase discounts because they all have a normal credit balance. So in our first entry, we're going to debit our sales we're gonna debit our purchase returns and allowances, and we're gonna debit our purchase discounts. We're also gonna debit our ending inventory because that's what we have at the end of the year. That's what we should be debiting, right? So we debit our ending inventory. And then to close that all out, we're gonna credit our income summary. So we take all these numbers, we add them up, and that's what goes to our, into our income summary for the credit side. Now, for what we need to credit is the rest of them, right? Sales returns and allowances, sales discounts, purchases, rent expense, salaries expense, utilities expense, depreciation expense, income tax expense. So here, we're going to credit all of those items. We're also going to credit our beginning inventory because that's not what we have anymore. We have the 30,000, which we debited. So we need to take out our beginning inventory number. And then we're also going to credit that and put that into our income summary and debit it that way. So now when we look at our income summary, we have a credit of 494. We also have a debit of 456, which means our balance in our income summary has a credit balance of 38,000 right now. So our income summary is a also a temporary account, which we need to put into our retained earnings. So if it has a credit balance right now, we need to debit that to close it out of the 38,000 and put it all into our retained earnings and credit it. Then we also need to pay our dividends of 11,000. So we debit our retained earnings and we credit our dividends. So this is the periodic way. We can do it this way with the debit to ending inventory and a debit or credit to beginning inventory, or you can also do it with a netted inventory of 10,000. So if we had 40,000 at the beginning of the year and we have 30,000 at the end of the year, we already took care of purchases here. You can just credit 10,000 to lower that account. Whichever one makes more sense to you, it's up to you, it, it won't matter. The numbers will be different, but in the end, you'll get the same amount going into retained earnings. So those are the two periodic ways. Now, when we look at perpetual, the only difference between perpetual and periodic is that we close certain accounts all into our cost of goods sold and we don't put them in the other areas. So to figure out what our cost of goods sold number is, there's five things that we need to, or four things we need to figure out. So our formula for cost of goods sold is our beginning inventory plus our net purchases 
will equal our cost of goods available for sale minus our ending inventory equals our cost of goods sold. So let's find those numbers. Our beginning inventory they tell us is $40,000. And net purchases, we kind of need to calculate that number. So our net purchases formula is gonna be our purchases minus our purchase discounts, minus our purchase returns and allowances, which will equal our net purchases. So our purchases are 105, our purchase discounts are 9,000, and our purchase returns and allowances are 6,000. So that means our cost of goods available for sale is gonna be 130,000. And then our ending inventory is we're gonna subtract 30,000, which means our cost of goods sold is 100,000. So instead of crediting beginning inventory, debiting ending inventory, and putting those in their places, we're putting it all into cost of goods sold. And cost of goods sold has a normal debit balance because it's an expense. And so we're gonna credit it to close it out. And that's the only difference between perpetual and periodic. We're just putting cost of goods sold instead of those different accounts. So your numbers, again, are going to be different that you're putting into your income summary, but the retained earnings number and the balance is still going to be the same.